So I'm on a launch drive with Suzuki of the new Swift, and typical of Suzuki, and they brought us to somewhere interesting. This is the classic motor hub. It's a bit of a shop and a rensor place and uh, a little bit of a museum. There's a Jaguar E-Type over there, so not exactly on brand, but it's kind of cool. So let's have a quick look around whilst we're here. A brown car. Lagonda, check it out. This is nice. This is a Lagonda, beautiful. Oh, and a Ford truck. Oh, that's very cool. That's for sale, 29,500 pounds. Beautifully presented. Oh, the smell in here is so strong. The smell of old car, the waxes, the oils. Oh my goodness. 1947 Bristol 400, 79,500 pounds for that one, if anyone is interested. And this one is 1954 Jaguar XK120 Drophead Coupe X Gilbert Code, 69,900 pounds. The blue is fantastic. Check out the belt straps. That's so cool. Right there, very, very good. I love the decor in this place. Look at all the plates up there, all the different rallies and everything. Jaguar E-Type. This one is a 1963 E-Type 3.8. This is left-hand drive, this one, and it is 130,000 pounds for that one. MG, a friend of mine is interested in this, actually. Shout out to him if he's interested. 1966 MGB V8 awaiting preparation, but then it'll be for sale for 39,500. Uh, V8's the one to have, isn't it? There you go. You want to be Pierce Brosnan, James Bond, 2005 Aston Martin Grand so Chris. 69, sorry. Hello. Wait, you're in heaven. I am in heaven. What about you, dude? This is Ben from Planet Auto. Say hi to everybody. How are you doing? And uh, we can't help it, can we? We're here on a Suzuki event, but they, they present us with the. I haven't been in there. What's in there? Some of the retro, uh, well, there's a D type, there's also some retro Aston Martins. Oh, we'll have to check that out. But I've been oogling uh, Pierce Brosnan's car here. That's uh, 69,500 for this uh, green Aston Martin Vanquish. Then we've got this uh, Mercedes, which is quickly look at that, 19,500, 350 SL, classic Mini. These prices on these are crazy, but this one's quite reasonable. 1960 Morris Mini Minor, 19,000 miles from new, totally original, 22,000 pounds. That's actually a bit of a bargain. That is an original clean car. Look at the interior, beautiful. Check that out. And here we have, what is this? This is a 1949 MG TC Gammon Special, 75,000 pounds. There's Gammon right there. So that's extraordinary. We've got another MG. This is 1965 MG Midget, 6GRX, 75,000 pounds. Race ready, that one. Take it racing. Here you go. This is a Series 1, I believe, Land Rover. And uh, Series 2, sorry. Oh, no, Series 1. It is Series 1. 80-inch, 1951. This is up for 59,950. It's actually stunning. Really, really cool. Um, we've got a uh, Scaglietti. And what's here back there? Look at this. This is like the, the uh, great race. This is, <laughs> this is from that era. 290,000 pounds for a 1909 vintage Benz 25-6 six-seat sporting Tourer. That's extraordinary. Look at the color on that one, the pinstriping red on the blue with these massive lamps. Isn't that incredible? So let's check out these cars. There's two more E-types that we're going to look at. And this is <coughs> beautiful in red. <coughs> look at that. <laughs> what do we got here? Hundred and, I'm loving it. I'm just uh, seeing how much money I've got in the bank, you know. <laughs> 150,000 pounds. For Can you hear that? That's I didn't hear it. That's All right, there you go. 150 grand for this 1961 Jaguar E-Type Series 1 flat floor, 1HC. So the interior on that one you saw earlier, 368 is the number plate. Beautiful red, orangey red one, this one. And we've got, this is a 1963 Jaguar E-Type S1 3.8, 138,000 pounds. And here finally we've got 1952 Talbot Lago T 15 Baby. This is factory upgraded to a 2.5 liter engine in 1955. Is there a sell price on it? Yes, 40,000 pounds. That is a way to arrive if you want to. Definitely. Wow, this is really cool. So apparently there's some more cars. 
over here. Let's have a look there. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Are you enjoying the video? Well, make sure you've punched the like button. It helps. Oh, check this out. We've got more stuff in here. Isn't this great? So, whoa. That's a nice, this is actually, I was filming the, my car, the car that I'm testing, the Suzuki uh, Swift, just on the other side of this roof, which is a corrugated sort of uh, rusty copper roof and looks uh, really cool from outside. So this is a 1964 Aston DB5. We're going proper old school bond here. 845,000 pounds for that one. Wow, just to be in the presence of something that's nearly a million pounds. And there it is. Trouble with something like that is that you can't drive them, can you? A million pounds on the road, would you? Depends, how rich are you? What have we got here? This is another Talbot 1936 BG110, 3.5 litre, three position DHC, 95,000 pounds. Look at the chrome work on that. Talbot, the blue is just gorgeous. It's a proper little racer here with a number two painted onto it. This is a, oh, Maserati. A6G's, is it Fangio's Maserati? Yeah, G86, uh, A6G CS Monofaro. Original engine gearbox, raced by manual, yeah, you want manual Fangio, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> I don't have the skill levels. I don't have, I really. I, I would, that would be just shameful for me to even sit in this. <laughs> It's a replica Solara chassis, chassis and body, period racing history. Oh, wow. And important, this is something very special. And uh, not, not surprisingly, it just says price on application. So there's no price to that thing. What do you reckon, guys? I want you to put in the comments what you think that would be worth. And uh, I think it would be worth quite a lot. That's what? 15 million. 15, 15 million, says somebody. There you go. That's the first comment. He wins the prize. <laughs> 15 million right there. <laughs> that is absolutely extraordinary. Wow. Just to be in the presence of something like that, right? Just to be in the presence of something oh, like this. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. It's not just the car, yeah. it's the experience and the memories. It's like you just kind of, you want to kind of infuse it. Oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> if it was a tea bag, you would hope to like infuse this. Yeah. This water. <laughs> Alpha That's what I thought it was an alpha. That's what I thought originally. Yeah. That's amazing. So what we have here, we have this is a 1935 Riley MPH 14.6, one of only 16 uh, cars to be built, and it's 408. This is half a million pound car, guys. This Riley. That's extraordinary. Yeah. This is extraordinary. I mean, this is honestly, and not knowing, you know, why we're so poor. <laughs> It's half a million pound car. Look at the fenders on that. That's absolutely gorgeous. And what do we have here? We've got 1931 Talbot A0 75 stroke 90 Go 8075. Fully disappearing hood. Le Mans classic eligible. Brooklyn's race history. 375,000 pounds for this car. What have we got over there? No way. This, this kind gentleman here is proving to me my guide here. Thank you very much. I didn't catch your name, sir. Jim. Jim, thank you so much, Jim. Oh, wow. So that's his signature right there. there. And there he is. So this that's is Sterling Cooper. Moss's car, Cooper. Yeah. Check it out. Just imagine, look at the car, no, no seat belt, no seat. Oh, what, did he, what did he used to say? It's safer to just fall out of them. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's what ended his career. It did, didn't it? Yeah, that was a good wood as well, wasn't it? This, it is, was good, yeah. this, is, not, this is not the car, is it? No, no, no. No, 1953 Cooper Alta Sterling Moss F2 car, unique Formula 2, built for Sterling Moss, raced by Moss in the 1953 season and campaign in, his, uh, in the historic racing series, price again on application. So once again, guys, you tell me what you think that car would be worth, but that is something very, very special indeed. Wow. <laughs> where, where are we today? We've just found ourselves in the presence of automotive greatness. This is extraordinary. We've got a 1924 Aston Martin long chassis tour. That's 95,000 pounds. Look at that beautiful thing there. This is just gorgeous. Look at the color, the interior, red with a two-tone blue. This is a 1938 Talbot Lago T23 baby. Three <laughs> oh, behave. And stunning design by coach builder Figoni et Falashi. 
uh, believed to be delivered uh, new to renowned French racing driver Louis Rosier, restored some years ago £325,000 for this thing. Isn't that absolutely stunning? And what is this here? I mean, honestly, like you don't know where to look. If you have a chance to come down here, you need to come down here because this is an extraordinary place. Check this out. This is a 1954 Jaguar XK40 open two-seater for sale, 169,000 pounds for that one. One car, which one would it be? This, well, I don't know whether it's Fangio's uh, Maserati or Sterling Moss's. Like the Zagato. The Zagato? Uh, it's a bit much for me. Is but it? Yeah, I'm, I'm never... This one, actually. Look at this one. Yeah. What's this, a Daytona? No, it's an E-Type, isn't it? Yes, it's got it's Daytona, yeah. Daytona colours, though. So we have a 64 Jaguar E-Type semi-lightweight competition and 300,000 pounds engineered by Valley Motorsport. Um, fully race equipped, really. That's race ready, that one. A couple more E-Types. I missed the Porsche. There's just a 356. B Roaster 61, 195,000 pounds. This was extensively used by BAC Chairman Reginald Verdon Smith. Fabulous history, featured an auto car and motor in 1948. How about that? Another E-Type, 150,000 for a 63 Series 1 3.8 FC. And let's look at that Zagato Aston Martin, which is a shape that I think, you know, it, it takes a while to adjust to it, I, I would say. No. Well, you know, it, no, this is like Miami, Miami. I think the Zagato, the Zagato, the classic Aston Martin Zagato is the one that I think is beautiful. Manual gearbox, check it out. This screams 90s. Though. It does, it does. It's brutish, isn't it? Yeah. It's very brutish. Look at that. Back in the day, that was a thing. It's almost Mad Max. It, it is, and this is uh, this is three hundred and seventy-five thousand. They do, they do. Air ducts there. Three hundred and seventy-five thousand, nineteen eighty-nine. Aston Martin V eight Zagato Volante, factory conversion to six point three liter expect <laughs> The only six point three right hand drive convertible, fourteen fifty miles per new, four thousand four hundred miles per new. What a waste! What a waste! Drive the thing. DB five. Here you go, James Bond again. No ejector seat on this one, sadly. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty much the car that James Bond would have. This one. That's the correct color, correct sort of spec. This is a 1963 Aston DB5, matching numbers, extensive history, five-speed gearbox, five-speed gearbox, 595,000 pounds. That's well over half a million for that. If you want to be Bond, that's what you have to spend. Here's another Aston Martin. This one's not for sale, I think, because there's no sign on that one. This is a 1970 Aston Martin DBS6, 225,000 pounds. This is the sort of car, actually, this is probably the car that you saw Roger Moore drive in, uh, what was it, the Persuaders, right, with Tony Curtis? And Tony Curtis had the Ferrari Dino, and then Roger Moore had, uh, what's it, Aston Martin F1 DBS. Really cool. But this, this is a proper Aston Martin of my sort of generation. Um, the sort of car that would appeal to me. Another DB6 right here in red. So how does a DB6 look more classic or older than the DB5? 235,000 pounds for this 1967 Aston Martin DB6. And finally, no, not finally, actually, I'm going to save the best for last. Save the best for last, but we're going to look here at the ESO Grifo Series 2 from 1972. That's 395,000 pounds, 5.7 litre Chevy V8 engine with an automatic, and it was discreetly signed by Piero Rivolta and uh, Giotto Buzzarini. Wow, fully restored. The one of only five right-hand drive cars, and it's beautiful absolutely gorgeous look at the lines on this thing look at the interior this is absolutely stunning wow that thing has got presence that is absolutely gorgeous and finally like i said i'm going to save the best for last actually uh, ben you said to me which one this one <laughs> this, this is this is well it's, it's kind of my era of 9-11 it's what i think of when i think of 9-11 
and that's just beautiful. It's amazing when you look at this compared to a modern one. That yeah, size. it's incredible, isn't it? But this to me is a proper 911. Yeah. 1975 911 3.0. The first 3.0 9.11 in the UK, extensively restored, and electric sunroof, 95,000 pounds. Guys, would you all subscribe to my channel and make sure that you sign up for subscriptions? Hopefully, you can get to 95,000 pounds, and then that can replace the BCG BMW E30. <laughs> 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 or maybe both of them. Anyway, th thanks so much to Ben and thanks so much to the guy earlier who was helping me out. But there's been a great walk around the, the classic motor hub. Where are we? Where is this? Do we know? Uh, Bybury? Bibbury? Bit Bidbury, Bybury. Where is this place? Bybury. Bybury. Yeah, so we're in. Not Bibbury. Not Bibbury. We're in Bybury. Come down, check it out. Is it open most days, this place? We are now open seven days now. Open yeah. seven days yeah. a week. Yeah, and people can. Well, and you can literally just walk in and have a look around and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Or do you have to book an appointment or anything? Uh, no, no. Come and. Come whenever you like. And there's um, a cafe and coffee you're not and everything. Now, are you? I am, yes. Oh, right. um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, so. You, it's um, not live, but I am yeah. recording. But it's useful to have because I've been showing people around this place. Yes. Some of the cars in there blew my mind. Yes. Honestly, yeah. absolutely incredible. But, yeah, what a, what a yeah, gem but, of a place. It's, it's seven days a week, um, we get loads of car clubs coming yeah. and, and stuff who can t turn up. And awesome. Is there a website thing? for this? Uh, classicmotorhub.com Excellent. Check it out there, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Thank a lot. You. Hope you enjoyed that, and I certainly did. I think, you know, it's really made my day. Driving the Suzuki Swift and checking out cars like this at the Classic Motor Hub. Um, if you get a chance to come down, let me know what you think of it. See you all in the next one. Check this out, guys. It's my book. It's my first novel, and it's written for car fans like you. It's a fun political action thriller. It's full of cool cars and spectacular action. Get your copy now at Amazon.com.